State Governor Babajide Somolu has assured that the gridlock typically experienced around the Apapa Corridor will end in October of 2020. Following the completion and opening for public use of all the road networks leading in and out of the port area, the governor disclosed that there is a massive and extensive road construction works that are ongoing in Apapa at the moment, while pointing out that they are using concrete for the roads that have been reconstructed. He announced that Liverpool and Crick's roads in Apapa have already been completed. Governor Somolu also pointed out that the disturbing gridlock created along a Papa corridor in Lagos State by heavy-duty trucks clogging the major highways may soon fade away if the actions the government is uh, taking materializes. And now we are joined by Basharun Uluwatoin, who is a transport consultant to make sense of this conversation. Good to have you, Uluwatoin. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, all right, may we just ask you to briefly, if you can, give us an update of what Apapa traffic is looking like right now. As it is, as at today, this afternoon, the congestion is remains the same. There's just a pathway for um, uh, private cars to move, but it's still congested. All mm. the way from Ijara, inward, um, inward Apapa Wharf, and from my two, in what a papa, in what thing can also, it is hmm. still very, very and highly congested. Oh, wow. Essentially, the, the situation is still the same, if you like. Um, <laughs> it is still the same. Wow. I mean, this, the, the Apapa traffic has become a constant. I mean, for those who live in Lagos and if, if you happen to come into Lagos, I'm wondering what's the way forward and how is the NPA policy helping with this? The MPA policy, really, because with the um, call-up card that we are asked to, to get for passing, which we take up to like, we'll pay like 60,000 Naira and we'll still keep the security at the entrance of MPA, at the ports with like 20,000 Naira. We will, with the call-up uh, with the, with the call card, they still give priority to some um, transporters that they, they pass why other transporters are still on queue. I don't know, even with the policy, nothing changes. Mm. People with the call card, there's still uh, no free movements. But yeah, I believe I um, this can only be eradicated if they could help us to, you know, all these illegal roadblocks. All these ir illegal roadblocks are the major problem we are actually facing in mm. Papa and how they should find means of decongesting the port itself. Mm. I mean, so this... that is the major problem. Although the, the roads are bad, but the real problem are all these illegal roadblocks. From Ijara inward, Apapa, you can have, like, you can see like 10 before you get to the wharf, which is not meant to be so. Right. You just uh, so pointed... So these are the major problems we are encountering. All these illegal roadblocks should be removed. This congestion of the port itself, I think that she will allow badges to start coming into Lagos, carrying the containers through badges, not through road. And that she will open other terminals. This had been like that since 2000, and uh, it has been running until they stop other terminals from operating. All right, so, Lua, so, so in, if I may come that. in there, uh, what you said at the beginning kind of sheds or points a light to my next question, which is there's a lot of extortion of truck drivers as well on that axis. How has this impacted also on the traffic? Like what I said earlier, those illegal roadblocks, for every roadblock, we, we pay money. Truckers pay money. They'll stop them to collect, to exalt money from them. The next one, they will stop them to collect money from them. So all these extortions are really the problem because you have to wait to pay to some we negotiate. And these are not just small money. We are talking about thousands. We are talking about 100,000. You know, you pay some make use of cross, um, cross or we make use of crossers. Those crossers they would have paid ahead of you, then they, they would pass through that you can go. But those that don't have that cannot have what crossers, we have to wait for check and everything, you know, staff to get in. All these things causes traffic. Mm. So this... if they can help us to remove all these all these roadblocks, there'll be full movements. 
Tax force is also towing trucks uh, on the queue has been a challenge in that uh, corridor as well. Tell us more about this from your experience. Okay, um, two weeks ago, my clients called me that the truck was actually towed, uh, towed from Ijora right in front of Sifax. On the queue, there is no room. All these um, uh, trucks are actually lined up. And last month came and told this truck from the key. The day the truck and last month office coming back to a papa again after they build the truck, tax force came again to tow the same truck. And this has become a truck. They are not obstructing the road. They are actually on it on a straight on a, on a line, and they will come and throw, tow the truck away from there. This is becoming so, and uh, my uh, transporters are really, really complaining about this. I'm just they wondering. Are not they are actually on their lane, and they will just come to tow the truck away, and they will pay. So, you know, I'm just wondering if you know which of the task force you're supposed to be making any payments to, and if you need to. Because from what you've just explained, if, it, if at every moment you have different task force, don't you have anyone that is designated to say, well, you collect this amount of money for whatever purpose, I mean, a justified purpose. Is there any such All regulation right. that is guiding such? From what I've heard, they have different, they are actually designated. We have one at Oshodi, we have the one in Keja, we have at Ojota. So sometimes they might, like that particular guy I told you, they told the truck, we didn't mind that probably it was Alausa. We got to Alausa, the truck wasn't there. They said we should go to Ojota. We got to Ojota, they said we should come back to Ijara before we saw the truck. Hmm. So they were just, I don't know. If it's from Tinkan, they might tell you that from Oshodi. They are coming to rage today. It's not meant to be so. Yeah. It's not meant to be so. I'm and just... all these are affecting the it's affecting the operation. The trucking business is not the it's not it, the business is becoming something else. Because all this money, the transporter would have calculated it on the uh, freight broker, and this will make whatever product they are carrying to be expensive because they would have had it everything with the logistics, with the, with the logistics. Because no, they would, they, because they would have normally um, from a papa walk to Oshodi should be like eighty thousand to hundred thousand, but now we pay like six hundred, seven hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand. Mm. Well, that's because that, they would that's have calculated quite... all those money they would pay. Before they allow, they will agree in taking the consignment. Yeah, so you know, I think you are raising very, very crucial uh, points there. We would f find another time to engage you more on this conversation because there seem to be more that we don't have time to be able to exhaust in this segment. Thank you so very much for your time and keep safe out there. Tony. Thank you. Mm -hmm.